Hello there, you're watching L24 Midnight News coming to you live from the capital Algiers and to the headlines. The International Court of Justice received the UN General Assembly request to give an advisory opinion on the legal consequences of the Zionist occupation of the Palestinian territories. The Secretary General of the Polisario Front, Brahim Ghali, was re-elected Friday for a new three-year term. European lawmakers voted to condemn Morocco for the first time in 25 years, calling for the respect of media freedom and the release of related prisoners. After lengthy discussions, NATO defense leaders at the U.S. air base in Germany failed to resolve a dispute over providing advanced battle tanks to Ukraine. Hello again and welcome on Friday. The International Court of Justice announced that it had received the request of UN General Assembly to provide an advisory legal opinion from the Court of Zionist Practices that affect human rights in the occupied Palestinian territory, including East Al-Quds. The court, which is based in the Dutch city of De Haigi, said that the request was transferred to the court through a letter sent by the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, on the 17th of this month, adding that the request was registered on Thursday. The Palestinian Foreign Ministry condemned the establishment of settlement in southeast Nablus by Zionist occupiers. A statement issued on Friday considered this crime a Zionist response to the visit of an American delegation to the Palestine, while Palestinians were shot in the attack of the occupation forces in Nablus. The Saudi Foreign Minister Prince Faisal bin Farhan affirmed that the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia will not normalize relations with the Zionist entity without the establishment of Palestinian state. Prince Faisal bin Farhan said that normalization and real stability will only come by giving the Palestinians hope and by giving them dignity, and this requires giving them a state. True normalization and true stability will only come through giving the Palestinians hope, through giving the Palestinians dignity, and, through, and that requires giving the Palestinians a state. Still with the, the Palestinian matter, two Palestinians were killed and three others were wounded by occupation forces bullets during the continuous aggression against the city of Jenin and the city of Camp. The Palestinian news agency reported that large forces of the occupation army stormed the Jenin camp and deployed snipers on the roofs of a number of houses and buildings. Violent clashes broke out between young Palestinians and the occupation forces who fired bullets, stun grenades and gas bombs at them. At least five Palestinians were injured today by the Zionist occupation forces during the weekly anti-colonization protests in the town of Kafr Gadum in the West Bank, according to local sources. The same sources said that the occupation soldiers attacked the protesters with rubber bullets and tear gas. Secretary General of Polisario France, Brahim Magali, was re-elected Friday for a new three-year term. According to the Electoral Commission of the 16th Congress of the Popular Front for Liberation of Segia Al-Hamra and what the deb, namely the Polisario Front, Brahim Magali obtained 69% of vote against 31 his countenda al-Bashir Mustafa Sayyid. The former uh, Moroccan diplomat Abdel Qader Shawi criticized the performance uh, at Moroccan diplomacy, considering that the Moroccan diplomatic work serves personal interests, adding that Morocco diplomacy is riddled with administrative and financial corruption, in addition to the poor performance of its representatives.
The official Moroccan diplomacy is not based on any theoretical and analytical basis that outlines its plans, perceptions, national interests, and long and near goals. Rather, its position is circumstantial and exceptional. The ambiguity of communication and poor familiarity, which does not take into account the areas of private life of peoples and the transformations that they know kept Morocco unknown, and at best it was seen as a backward Arab country belonging to the Middle Ages. Still with uh, Morocco for the first time in 25 years, members of the European Parliament criticized Morocco and called on Nerba to respect media freedom and release all political prisoners and detain journalists. Mohamed Khatou. The European Parliament criticized the deterioration of press freedom in Morocco while expressing concern about Rabat's involvement in a bribery scandal that rocked the European body and which is being investigated by the Belgian judiciary. For the first time in 25 years, the human rights situation in Morocco is on the Parliament's agenda. Omar Hadi and many other journalists critical of the regime face smear campaigns arbitrary detention and are convicted in dodgy trials. The EU Parliament also emphasized the dirty means used by the Mahzen regime to cover up human rights violations and exactions ranging from intimidation to paying bribes. With intimidation, blackmail, instrumentalization of migrants and even bribery of MEPs, Rabat tries to silence critics and cover up the domestic human rights situation. The Parliament stressed on the occasion that to seek credibility, the EU body should not be silenced by regimes just for the sake of personal interests. Let this be a moment of reflection, not only for this Parliament, but also for the Commission and the Member States to critically assess their priorities within their relationship with Morocco. Human rights are universal. If we want to be credible, we cannot be silenced by regimes just because we prioritize our own interests. It's worth recalling that the Belgian Federal Prosecutor's Office launched an investigation to look into the circumstances of the bribery scandal that dealt a serious blow to the reputation and integrity of the European Parliament MPs. In the African continent, there was a significant presence of Algerian products from various sectors at the Nouakchott exhibition. This exhibition was organized to maintain bilateral trade between Mauritania and Algeria and to strengthen Algeria's market share in Africa. Sofian Kanturi. The exhibition of 170 Algerian economic operators in the capital Nouakchott is another chance to increase the presence of Algerian products in the Mauritanian market as part of Algeria's new strategy to increase its exports outside hydrocarbons and to improve its trade exchanges with Mauritania. Today we are in our second country to organize the largest trade exhibition of Algerian companies in Nouakchott, with the participation of more than 170 Algerian companies from different sectors. Algeria reiterates its full readiness to expand its business relations with Mauritania, and its will to seal investment contracts with a neighboring country based on win-win principle. This will be an opportunity to bring together businessmen from both countries to discuss the development of the two countries' relations. We also informed the president of the meeting to be held on Saturday between Algerian businessmen and the Mauritanian brothers, and which will be an opportunity to discuss means of developing bilateral relations, especially since the conditions are met and the bounds between the two presidents are very strong. Over the past three years, there has been noticeable increase in the value of trade between Algeria and Mauritania. During the last 10 months, it has reached more than $108 million, up from $25 million in 2019. In the same line of thought, the Minister of Trade and Export Promotion, Mr. Kamal Razik, paid a visit, an official visit, to Mauritania on Thursday to inaugurate the Algerian Production Fair held in the capital, Nouakchott. This Ministry of Trade and the Export Promotion indicated that this fair aims to showcase the Algerian high-quality products of various sectors and to promote them in this brotherly country. The event will last until January 24. 
and a special address to the nation on the 62nd anniversary of the founding of the Malian Army. The head of the Malian Transitional Authority, Colonel Asimi Goita, announced the launch of a military operation to combat terrorism in the country that comes after Mali witnessed a series of recent attacks in central and southern of the country. Still in African hundreds demonstrated against France in Burkina Faso's capital Ouagadougou on Friday, expressing the growing anti-French sentiment that prevails in West African country. Hundreds gathered in central Ouagadougou chanting anti-France slogans and branching placards calling on the French army to get out and setting fire to French flags. Burkina Faso is fed up with France. Burkina Faso wants to break all relations with France. That's why we are burning the French flags, because we want to show France we don't need it anymore. Mogadishu announced that it had neutralized at least 100 terrorists belonging to a Shabab group following a foiled attack on a military center in the town of Jalad. The Somali Information Ministry also indicated that seven members of the army were killed during this attack. Shifting uh, to the European continent now, where well, more than one million French citizens took to the streets across the country on Thursday to protest against the government's controversial pension reform plan. France's Ministry of the Interior estimated that the number of protesters reached 1.12 million across France. Women in France already retire later than men with their pension contribut contributions paused or reduced due to maternity leave, the proposed reforms will not compensate enough for the longer working period required for them to reach full pensions. Absolutely, women will be more impacted by this reform because women have more difficulties to get the full pension rights. You have in France to contribute for 42 years now and soon it will be 43 years by 2027 and women interruptions for taking care of children. This is currently partly compensated and they will improve a little bit the compensation but not to the point to compensate for the two more years which is asked to a lot of these women. Amid the continuing conflict in Ukraine and the dire economic crisis that grips France and most European countries, French President Emmanuel Macron announced an increase in army's budget by a third. Hassan can. French President Emmanuel Macron proposed on Friday boosting military spending by over a quarter in coming years, saying the hike would help ensure transformation of the army to respond to multiple potential threats. The decision seems justified to Macron, but it comes at a height of a difficult internal economic situation and an unprecedented energy crisis. Such a decision, according to observers, may lead to popular discontent and an expansion in the size of the army. We have to win the time separating us from the next conflict. Yes, the nation has to transform its armies by keeping its core strategies, by relying on the excellence and devotion of its military staff. But as a nation, we also need to transform ourselves to be ready for more wars, more brutal wars and more ambiguous wars too. The economic crisis and the pressure from the streets have caused the French president to say on multiple occasions that he understands Russia's security concerns about NATO's expansion in Eastern Europe. However, Macron's understanding of Moscow's concerns did not result in Paris' decision to reduce its military support to Kyiv. A position that seems contradictory may be explained that Europe is forced to financially support Kyiv under pressure from the United States. The budget for the period will stand at 413 billion euros, up from 295 billion euros in 2019-2025. The planned 2024-2030 budget would enable transformation program to adapt the military to the possibility of a high-intensity conflict, made all the more urgent since the start of the Russia's operation in Ukraine. After lengthy discussions, NATO defense leaders at U.S. air base in Germany, Rammstein, failed to resolve a dispute over providing advanced battle tanks to Ukraine. Nabil Khazini tackled the story in this report. 
For these Ukrainian soldiers fighting on the front line, the tanks they are using now are outdated, while the belligerent has more sophisticated weaponry. We need more tanks, says this Ukrainian soldier. These are the tanks Ukraine currently says it needs during its long battle against Russia, but such heavy armored fighting vehicle is still considered taboo for Kiev's allies. There was a hope for Kiev during the Friday meeting in Germany to boost its firepower. However, the hope was dampened by its close allies and a major split has come to the surface. We don't fear anything. We have just responsibility for our population in Germany and in Europe. And we have to balance all the pros and contras before we decide things like that, just like that. This is nothing else. And I'm very sure that there will be a decision in the short term, but I don't know why and I don't know how the decision will look. Does not allow for... Until the decision is taken, President Zelensky of Ukraine said his country will continue to fight to ensure a supply of modern heavy armor. A fight for a country already in a fierce battle against a superpower whose rival, the United States, said it is up to supporting nations to make the decision to send tanks or not. I don't think they need to hear anything uh, specific from the United States other than what we've been saying, Jeff, which is that these are sovereign decisions, we respect them, we, we welcome them. We, we do believe that there is a need for uh, armored capability, including tanks inside Ukraine, uh, and the Leopard tank is a terrific system. Very, very uh, modern, uh, very effective. The UK made the first move by supplying Ukraine with 14 of its Challenger 2S. The United States and its NATO allies have resisted for nearly a year, sending heavy tanks to the Ukrainians. But now the resistance is starting to wane. In the same matter, Russia's defense ministry said on Friday that its forces had taken control of Kleshivka, a settlement south of Bakhmut in Donetsk region. It comes a day after the head of Russia's Wagner private militia announced the village had fallen to its forces. Last week, Russian forces captured Solidar to the northeast of Bakhmut and advanced that defense analysts said could help them put pressure on the larger town. In the Donetsk direction, volunteers of assault detachment with fire support from operational tactical and army aviation missile troops and artillery of southern military district liberated the settlement of Kleshivka of the Donetsk People's Republic. In the Zaborugia direction, the settlement of Lobkovi, Zaborugia region, was liberated by successful offensive action of the units of Eastern Military District. A hangar with weapons and military equipment of Ukrainian armed forces was destroyed near the village of Kamyansky, Zaborugia region. Also, in the area of Mala Tukmashka, Zaborugia region, a U.S. made counter battery radar was destroyed. Following U.S. and Japanese talks last week on semiconductor-related export control on China, the Chinese foreign minister on Friday condemned Washington for abusing export controls. Earlier, a U.S. official said on Tuesday that the talks held between Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kichida and U.S. President Joe Biden in Washington were very productive. The United States side has repeatedly used its national power to abuse export controls and politicize, instrumentalize and weaponize science and technology and economic and trade issues to maintain its own hegemonic self-interest. The United States side has even gone so far as to harm its own friends and enrich itself by imposing economic coercion on its allies, maliciously blocking and suppressing Chinese enterprises, and artificially pushing forth industrial transfer and the coupling. In Latin America, Peru's president Dina Bularte has called for dialogue after clashes between protesters and police during a nationwide demonstration left one person dead and 30 injured. Thousands of protesters in Peru, most of whom are from the country's heavily indigenous south, descended on Lima, angered by mounting death toll since unrest erupted last month due to the ousting of former President Pedro Castillo. No, I will not get tired of inviting those who are protesting, those who have moved from the provinces towards the capital for dialogue. I will not get tired of telling them, let's work on the vision this country needs.
Coming back to Algeria, Algerian Agriculture Minister Mohamed Abdel Hafid Hanni announced on Thursday during the government's governor's meeting in Algeria, shared by President Abdel Majid Tabun that the Davos Economic Forum ranked Algeria as one of the leading countries in the world in terms of food security thanks to its domestic production. According to Hanni, the report highlighted the fact that over the past two years, the share of agricultural production per capita has doubled. Opening the African uh, Home Base Players Championship on Friday evening, Mauritania and its Angolan opponents scored a goalless draw in a game of the second round of Group D in the African Cup of Nation, Nations for home base players. This result was in favour of the Mauritanian team, taking into consideration that its next round will be against Mali, which also has one point in the third round. The Angolan national team will await the outcome of Mali's confrontation with Mauritania to determine its fate in qualifying. In the other game, in Group E, the Congo Brazzaville team bid farewell to the African tournament hosted in Algeria by scoring a goalless draw against Niger, or rather Niger. The game in around the stadium Melud Hedfi was Congo's last chance to stay in the competition after losing to Cameroon in the first round. This result gives Niger the opportunity to move to the next stage as the second team of Group E after Cameroon. And to this end, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being with us. For more updates, you can follow our social media platform. And for now, good night.